And we'll have more from Hillbilly Days in just a moment. But first, a group of officials are continuing to celebrate funding coming to Eastern Kentucky after this legislative session. WYMT's RJ Johnson has more. Coming together to recognize hard work made by lawmakers to secure more than $40 million for the counties of Clay, Jackson, Lee, Leslie, and Owsley. Focus Executive Director Tal Jones says the funding will help bring economic development into the area. I tallied the uh, project totals up and they amount to around $48 million in the budget to enhance infrastructure and get us in, in the competitive market for new industry coming into the area, expanded housing opportunities into the area, and general community development. State Representative Tim Truitt says they were able to identify needs in the area to work together. All of those areas that, that join us here in our area and how that by working together on infrastructure, we can hopefully improve tourism and uh, improve the living conditions of, of all of our constituents. He says in order to help bring more people into the region, they must invest in projects. We had the floods a couple years ago. We've had, you know, tons of people leaving Eastern Kentucky. So we know what we've got here. Uh, we want to promote it. We want people to come. And in order to do that, we've got to have infrastructure. We've got to have the water, the sewer, you know, the electricity, the, uh, the fiber. Truitt says projects such as water and gas along Highway 30, which is used by many each and every day. You know, Highway 30 is a perfect example. Highway 30 is running through Jackson County, Owsley County, and Lee. But, but it impacts Laurel County. It impacts Wolf County. It impacts all of the counties, you know, close by. So these types of, of infrastructure improvements help everybody. He says this allows the entire region to reap the benefits of the funding. In Jackson County, R.J. Johnson, WYMT Mountain News. Projects include water and sewer expansion, park development, trails, and more. In Laurel County, a Southern Kentucky man is accused of stabbing a person and running off. London police arrested Terry Lynch. They say a man at SNR Apartments was stabbed multiple times and told officers his attacker left the scene. Police eventually found Lynch in a field and arrested him. He's facing multiple charges. The victim is recovering in the hospital. One person is arrested after a shots fired incident in Mingo County, West Virginia. According to our sister station, troopers with West Virginia State Police received a call about gunshots being fired near a home on Ben Creek in the Warncliffe area. When troopers arrived at the scene, they say they encountered a person who took off running before they caught them. That person's name has not been released. Mingo County Schools had been on a precautionary lockdown, but that's since been lifted. A former juvenile detention facility worker admits to breaking a 15-year-old boy's arm out of anger. Nathaniel Lumpkins pleaded guilty on April 8th. According to the Lexington Herald Leader, the incident happened in January of 2019 at the Woods Bend Youth Development Center. Staffers were trying to calm down the teen when Lumpkins stepped in, escalated the situation, and broke the teen's wrist out of anger. Lumpkins faces up to 10 years in prison when he's sentenced in August. We are live in downtown Pikeville for the 2024 Hillbilly Days Festival and the weather is fantastic here in Pike County. We are tracking some more sunshine and dry weather and some comfortable temperatures as we go into this evening. So come on and head on down to downtown Pikeville for the fun, the food and the festivities. Let's take a live look over at Buffalo Mountain from Perry County and once again tracking some sunshine over in Perry County. That current temperature up to 82 degrees and for the middle of May we should be in the lower 70s and we are well above average up to 87 for our friends in Clay County 84 in Jackson and 83 over in London at this hour upon first alert pinpoint Doppler as promised a clean sweep and that will continue into this evening but a few changes as we go into late tonight also on Friday all thanks to this weather system over Missouri also pushing into Illinois some showers and storms maybe a couple of high wind gusts close to Lake Cumberland this evening but for most of us no big issues. If you're heading out to downtown Pikeville, those lows are back in the middle to lower 60s as we go into tonight and a few spotty showers at times tomorrow. Not going to be a washout, but you may see a few showers at times on Friday. Those highs not as warm 
We top out in the upper 60s to lower 70s. Plenty of blue sky and sunshine for parade day on Saturday, and those highs are back in the middle 60s. But some cooler conditions on the way by Sunday and maybe some patchy frost by Sunday night. Those details on the way in just a few minutes. Steve? All right, Cameron, thank you. Earlier today, if you haven't heard, London native Reed Shepard announced he is putting his name in the NBA draft. In Shepard's one season with Kentucky, he averaged 12.5 points per game, a little more than four rebounds per game, and 4.5 assists per game. Shepard shot 53% from the field and 52% from three-point range. Sports reporter Armando Berry will have much more about all this and what it means later in sports. Well, you just saw Cameron there. The Hillbilly Days Festival is packing Pikeful with people from the carnival to the vendors. City officials say it is the largest event to date. WYMT's Buddy Forbes is also live for us tonight in Pikeful with a look at day one. Buddy. That's right, Steve. The smells, sounds, and sights are pretty familiar as the festival rolls through its first day with visitors from all around gathering here to take advantage of that sun for a day full of smiles. Do you believe in love at first sight or you want me to walk by one more time? One more time. Whether it's love, laughs, or lemonade, you'll probably find something you're looking for in downtown Pikeville during the next few days. 47. Hillbilly Days. That's what we're starting this year. As the city's premier festival fills the downtown area with its usual attractions and a few new festivities. We are so excited. This year we have the most vendors that we have ever had at a festival. Rolling into the first day with the mission in sight. Giving back to Shriners Children's Hospitals. Well, that's the way, only way we get exposure and, and we try to get out to any festival we can to raise money and make people aware of the hospital and the good work we do. Seeing visitors from all around drop by the hillbilly huts for food, fun, and fundraising. We have a large map and we want you to come by and tell us where you're from, what part of the state you're from, or what state in the country you're from. And we're going to light up that map so we can have a gauge as to where everyone's coming from. And while the sights and sounds make the festival what it is. I always look forward to the music because it's such a an intricate part of our Appalachian heritage and all of the wonderful groups that come in. The Shriners say they are proud to keep watching how it grows in its efforts to help children. To let people know that we've got hospitals out there to, there to help them. Now the opening ceremony is just wrapping up in the city park and the Appalachian Wireless Fireworks Show is expected to kick off at dark, hoping to light up the night here in Pikeville. Buddy Forbes, WYMT Mountain News. All right, buddy, thank you. We'll, of course, continue our coverage of the festival during the next two days, and you might see some familiar faces in the parade on Saturday afternoon. Well, Governor Andy Bashir announced the Kentucky Housing Corporation will receive funding that will impact eastern Kentucky. The governor says KHC will receive $23 million. He says the money is a reallocation of emergency rental assistance. The governor says the Housing Corporation will use the funding on housing development projects for the homeless, low-income, and elderly Kentuckians. $16 million will fund three affordable housing projects. The first is Townview Apartments. That is a 24-unit development in Hyden, Leslie County. 17 duplexes compromising 34 units in Owsley County. Governor Bashir says $6.5 million will go to 10 homeless service providers covering several area development districts in the state. Officials with Firestone Air Ride have announced the opening of two new distribution centers. One of those is in Williamsburg. In a news release, officials say the total investment of approximately $26 million will enhance the company's ability to serve its customers. Officials say the investment in Williamsburg builds upon a recent plant expansion to meet the growing demand for the company's Air Springs products. It's not known how many jobs this will provide for the area. Our parent company, Gray Television, has agreed to bring back Investigate TV Plus for a second season. According to Nielsen, the 30-minute news magazine show has meant a 25% spike in audience among adults that are 18 and older across gray markets since last fall. You can watch Investigate TV Plus Monday through Friday at 9 a.m. right here on WYMT. We also frequently air some shorter versions of their stories on Mountain News at 11. 
We are calm this evening, but rain chances are not far away. Your Friday forecast plus your weekend forecast after this break. Plus, we will continue our profiles of this year's East Kentucky Leadership Award winners with one community action agency serving the region now for six decades.